This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. Creative ad agencies are known across the globe as one of the best employers when it comes to job satisfaction or fun work environment. So if you are bored of doing a 9 to 5 job or are just starting out your career, then perhaps advertising can be your option. Hello and welcome, you're watching Heads Up and tonight on the show, we are taking you inside the world of a creative ad agency as we explore careers in the world of advertising. Now we have with us Surbi from Foxy Morons team who is going to take, who is going to walk us through the process of how an ad campaign is designed. Surbi, welcome to the show. Hi. Uh, hi. Why don't you start telling us about you know how does this all happen? Where does it begin? Okay, so uh, what I'll tell you is basically how we get sort of a brief from a client. Right. So a brief comes, we have, we get more details, we talk about it. Right. Then we get the strategy team on board who starts right. breaking the brief down, right? So once that starts happening, then we reach out to our research team. Okay. Because before we get to an insight, we need somebody who gets all the research, you know, right. starts digging conversations, gets you everything across channels, across the digital domain, right? Right. So that is where we have our uh, listening team. Okay. They sort of get us all these conversations, okay. which helps us get to the insight for the idea okay so uh, why so let's have a word yes yeah. let's have a word with him okay hi so can you just tell us a bit about what's your job all about you know what are you doing over here right now so this stage of the planning process for digital brands is called, called social listening okay uh, before we get into any strategy any ideas we first need to need to understand what are people talking about okay. both the industry the brand the competitors right so essentially what we're doing is trying, trying to understand the sentiments we're trying to understand what are the common conversations that take place, okay. what are the trends, what are the volumes, before we make any informed decisions. So, so that's like constant monitoring of social activities basically. That's right, that's, it's live monitoring as well as historic. And what are the platforms that you're monitoring? These are all social platforms across the web, right from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram to YouTube. Everything. Okay. okay. Thanks yeah. for talking to us. <coughs> All right. So right, sir. So we have an idea about how you know social listening happens, but yeah. what next? Once you know that you know what's happening, what's trending, what happens after that? So after this comes the idea. Okay. So I think what a lot of people do is that they think of the idea first and do not see uh, how they're backing it up, right? They're not closer to reality. Right. So once we have this in place, then you have an idea which is closer to reality and sort of paints the pretty picture, which is the correct picture for the brand. Okay. Um, and that comes from strategy team. Okay. Once you have the idea in place, we start sort of reaching out to all our functional teams. So you have your web, which is, then you have your video, you have your uh, media, you have uh, digital PR, you have everybody, even tech. Right. So uh, we have some of the teams that sit out of this office and some stay uh, stay out of the Bombay office. Okay. So you have, I have the video team here, I have the design team here. Right. So design team sort of puts, so when I go to a client, I need a, I need a new look for the campaign, right? right. So they sort of help me create that look, okay. basis the brief. Um, so if you can just take us through something, you know, like, yeah, explain us, how so does it happen? that's Arun. Okay, hi, so can you just tell us a bit about what you're doing over here? What is this campaign or sort of image that I can see you working on? Uh, right now I'm making a creative for Discovery, a GIF. Okay. Uh, this GIF is on uh, World Nature Conservation Day. So it's basically mentioning stuff about... Uh, extinction of species and uh, depletion of forests. So as a graphics person, you know, what are some of the key things that you have to always sort of keep in mind when you are developing something, some content for your client? I guess the basic sense of uh, balance. I mean, that's like a principle, a key principle when it comes to graphic designing. Right. So. And what about the kind of skills you need to be in, in you know, in your place? for someone to be in your place? Skills, I mean basic software knowledge, knowledge like uh, Photoshop and that's like the basic software. Right. Apart from that for animations I use uh, After Effects. Okay, so. Okay. thanks for talking. Yeah. Right Sarvi, so what next? So while you do have the designs in place, every brand is right now about video content. Right. And I think it's time we head to the video team because okay. they sort of put it together for us from uh, script writing to storyboarding to 
basically taking so it to the client. Why do you think that video content has become so important over time? You know, because whether it's your social media apps like Instagram, yeah. Facebook, Twitter, to even TVCs, it's become so important. I think earlier it was all about creating awareness, but now more and more, so brands just want people to engage with them. Right. And that's happening a lot with your uh, a GIF, which is more interactive, a video, which is more interactive, and that's how it has become now. So, so when we talk about video content, I mean, what does uh, the video team essentially do? So they sort of create scripts that brands create for themselves. We also look at uh, getting content aggregators on board and you know tie with an AIB or a TVF and we have a concept in mind and we sort of tie with them. Right. That happens and uh, you know basic edits, um, for example, um, like we had GSK on board, right? So GSK would have a TVC and we'd right. sort of clip and make edits out of that. I think we have a case study going on here for this company. Okay, okay. So. Looks interesting. So can you just tell us a bit about what are you working on? And we are basically creating case studies for different brands. Okay. So uh, in this we include Discovery, Horlicks and many more like Moto and what Vera also. Case studies? case studies basically we are showcasing that how campaigns did very well for us. All right. That's Thank you. So, so talking about striking a balance between you know what happens with the graphic team yeah. and what happens with the video team, yeah. like what really goes about? It's basically as per the brief, right? It's also brief and then you realize the budget. So right. the client wants to maybe create a microsite, then I sort of brief the web team. But we don't have budget for a microsite, so we look into doing a canvas in Facebook that right. makes it easier and cheaper. Uh, video content, uh, where, so we'll do animations if we have lesser budgets. We'll do real footage when we have uh, okay. more budgets. So we sort of create a balance basis of brief and the budgets and sort of reach out to all our teams so that we sort of capture all domains. And, and once you have the video content and everything is ready, like it's in place, then what? Is now that the closing the, of the... <laughs> that now the deck sort of gets accumulated okay. and it's not like anything like Mad Men, but it's insane because right. we sometimes we spend nights creating this one deck and I'm then sure. sort of take it. And then we sort of go pitch it and win it. Okay, thank yeah. you so much for talking thank to you. us. Right, so that was all about how a creative ad agency works and how do they go about designing ad campaigns. And now for aspiring entrepreneurs who want to start off their own ad agencies, we have with us one of the founders of Foxy Moron who's going to share with us their journey. So we welcome to the show. Let's start off with understanding how has the journey been like for you? You know, you were just 19 year old when you started out with your co-founders and then, you know, with just a small capital of 64,000. I mean, how was it like? And, you know, people say that you need a lot of money to start up, but how much is it true? Uh, the agency business essentially is a services business and uh, it kind of it's a self-sufficient business to the extent that you hire people to work on clients businesses clients pay you certain money um, you know to cater those businesses and that money kind of pays for people's salaries and that money keeps you know the lights on and uh, the bells ringing uh, having said that 64,000 rupees as you said is close to nothing it was uh, you know just a, a little bit of savings that we had that we kind of put into this summer project we were conservative when we started off obviously started very small there was a lot of bootstrapping involved for the first six months we didn't have an office we worked out of my bedroom uh, we made some money over the summer right. saved up the money and put into a small 280 square foot office and at that point of time we were 14 of us in a 280 square foot office so as a startup you know how easy or tough was it for you to convince people to give you business the two challenges we faced are hey what is digital because in 2008 people thought digital was limited to a website some crm project right. and a little bit of search so what is digital and the second challenge was who the hell are you you know because you're a 19 year old boys in your shorts and chappals barely finishing your classes cutting out of your classes in college and coming and talking to us about you know spending advertising dollars and marketing dollars as the industry kind of picked up over the first couple of years and some global headquarters in london or paris had some you know mandate saying that it's time to put money in digital fortunately there was a little bit of recall saying you know those boys used to come in and ask us for business maybe we should call them in and give them a brief but the second challenge ab about us being a startup unheard of no background no agency experience that kind of stayed with us for a while so how do you go about bursting that bubble you know that you are a startup uh, i think your work eventually ends up speaking for itself um, what's happened with us is that over the last 10 years uh, we've not once actually picked up the phone and cold called a client um, most 99.9% .9 of our business comes from referral business, word of mouth business. It's quite interesting, you completed your uh, bachelor's in law first and thereafter you gave a complete 360 degree turn around your career, you know, you learned, you specialized in skills in electronic communication and mobile app development and all. And suddenly then you land up in advertising as a career. Why the shift? 
So I come from a family of lawyers. Uh, so I knew I was going to study law ever since I was old enough to, to decide what I wanted to do. Uh, and we started the business actually when I was 19, when, when I was actually in, my, in between my second and third year of management college. When we started the business, the objective was to do something in the marketing and advertising space, something in the creative and communication space. Right. And it was a punt, to be honest. No one really knew whether the digitalism industry would, would take off, whether the agency would grow. There wasn't even ag an agency to start off with. Absolutely. It was an absolute gamble. I would say more than a gamble, it was a fortunate coincidence or a fortunate accident. Let's talk a bit about the scope and challenges of being in this industry. I mean, you know, you have bigger ad agencies out there as your competitors. So what is it like to work, you know, uh, when you have challengers like those outside? Uh, the challenge always was that as the digital pie kept growing and, you know, it moved from 1% to 14% of the overall uh, advertising pie, it always threatened the wallet share of the larger agencies. And the, the larger agencies kept on saying that, you know, we can upskill, we can upsell, and we can take digital under our, you know, boutique of services that we do offer to our clients as well. The second challenge obviously came from the fact that as the, the, the digital industry kind of expanded, talent acquisition became a very big problem as well because you can't keep working with fresher, freshers straight out of college. You need uh, you know, mature people, you're handling large clients, you're handling large uh, budgets. You, you do need people with a certain amount of branding and advertising experience. Then retaining a uh, the talent became a challenge because when we started off, there were a handful of agencies and today there are hundreds and hundreds of digital agencies across the country. And how do you see the scope of being in this industry? Like, What does the growth uh, of the industry look like at this point? Sure, so the industry has actually grown, you know, both in length and in breadth over the last few years. Uh, a, the number of advertisers that are entering this industry keeps increasing year on year as advertisers get more conscious about the fact that their audiences are online. Uh, B, in terms of what the advertisers are doing in the digital space also has increased very drastically. And slowly and steadily, content has now become mainstream when clients are investing primarily in content campaigns revolving around social uh, video content and production. Today, clients invest a lot of money in online reputation management for uh, you know, uh, customer service, etc., so on and so forth. For someone who is an aspiring entrepreneur like you and who wants to kickstart, build their own brand, you know, creative ad agency, what would your uh, advice be to them? Uh, I think while starting out, most people look behind them, most people look at their careers, most, pe most people look at their experience saying, what are the skills I've gained, how can I utilize those skills to build an organization? Yeah. And unfortunately, the more you look at the past, you kind of live in the past, as opposed to living in the future, which is where our industry is kind of going, you know, uh, keeping an open eye to, uh, you know, what's happening tomorrow. Uh, I think the second tip is also about not falling to failure. I think while starting up, uh, and especially with the startup boom that we've seen over the last few years in India, more startups fail than you know the startups that actually move forward and succeed. Yeah. Well, that was a wonderful chat. Thank you so much for being with us on the show. Thank you. All right, it's time for us to slip into a short break, but don't go anywhere because on the other side we'll continue exploring the world of advertising. <laughs>